Hey everybody and welcome to this week's review of Samurai Jack Season 5 with the boys from Weird Future. Today I have two good friends of mine to join me. Here we have Chris. What? How did you do? And Chives. Hello there people. So this week we're going to be reviewing the second episode of Samurai Jack. I don't know if you guys have seen the first but we also reviewed that one and you guys should go watch that as well. So I'm going to start talking a little bit about what happens in the episode, then I'm going to give it off to my friends here who are going to talk about what they liked and didn't like or what they just liked in, in general because it was a really good episode, I think. So basically, if you guys have watched the last episode, we see that there are these seven daughters born of this occult for a coup, basically chasing Jack, and the majority of the episode is them following Jack. But before any of that happens, we see actually a coup, with a different voice actor, obviously. The original voice actor died, unfortunately. And uh, he's he's having this kind of, like, internal struggle. Dealing with the thought that Jack's been around for 15 years. And he's basically a constant reminder that Aku is basically mortal. Or, like, just a, a reminder that Aku can die. That's what Jack is. And he's it's kind of making Aku go a little crazy just like Jack is. But in a, in a funnier way. Uh, Jack's is a lot more serious. So I'm going to give it off to Chris who can talk about what he likes. So Chris, go for it. All right. So what I really liked about this is that, you you know, you do see a coup in the, the, the little scene right there. And he's just kind of like talking, thinking to himself and uh, with the, the psychiatrist that, that was, that was pretty interesting. He's, he's, uh, he's going off on how he's, he's feeling a little bit e easy or uneasy about, how uh jack is still alive after all these years and uh when you when you see the when you, going back to the beginning of the episode where you see him not like worrying about anything when they said oh yeah we built a a robo a robot to kill the samurai he's like ah we don't have to worry about that guy anymore that guy is history like that was an interesting little thing to put but um i did have a little bit of issues with that part like just it was the fact that you know he Oh, no. no I, I couldn't say I had any issues. No. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. All right. Yeah, well, if, we go, if, you're, if you're good with that, do you have anything else to say? Anything, any other interesting bits? About the entire episode? Yeah, the entire episode. Oh, okay. So another thing that I did like was the parallel that was drawn between the wolf and the tigers to Jack. And the, well, the wolf being Jack and the tigers being the daughters of a coup. Um, I really like that because, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a foreshadow. Um, he's going to be uh, tried or he's going to be, uh, it's pretty much a, a trial for Jack to see if he could survive this or not or end up like the wolf or possibly be like the wolf. Um, where the wolf comes out somewhat victorious, but... He, he doesn't look like the wolf escaped with its life. So um, I think that was very interesting that they the animators did that and the story writers did that and just put in that parallel with uh, Jack and the wolf. Um, and we'll see if he'll come out uh, as battered and bruised as the wolf or maybe possibly dead. I don't yeah. know. But we'll find out. Yeah, so if that's if that's what Chris is good with, let's let's move over on to Chives. What do, what did you think about the episode? Any any highlights that you might put up there? Well, to start off, uh, I totally agree. I think the wolf analogy was genius. It was well put and simple. Um, I'd say it it it's it's a different way to view Jack as. Uh, He's, as he's been waiting these 50 years, he's slowly been going crazier and crazier. Uh, another way you can put it is he's going more primal and just more on instinct like the wolf. So to see him fighting, you know, those tigers, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it brings it more to, to your eyes than it might in just pure battle. But besides that, I mean, there, this episode is full of different gems, different parts that, you know, Take your breath away. Um, I think a big part is the uh, scene where Jack is underneath uh, the broken down robot and he's, uh, you know, fighting with himself again. 
And it, and, it, um, and a big point of that too is that it's a young Jack versus an old Jack too. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. Uh, that was that was really interesting that they had Jack as how he should be versus but, what he is now. Y- exactly. Continue. Sorry. No, no, don't worry. Um, no, but I think that's a, that, that scene was kind of crucial because uh, uh, just aside the fact of Jack fighting with himself, he he's one you can kind of see the glimpse of hope in him where he's telling himself he can't give up, but also the point. And this has been, you know, shown multiple times, even through episode one, the horseman, this big, scary, unknown person that keeps appearing to Jack appears you know yet again within a crack in the robot and uh jack this time you know I, you guys can tell me if you feel different about this but he d- he doesn't seem as scared it, when he in, sees it yeah in fact in fact in this episode he decides to chase it he goes for it like that like when he sees the thing is the temple that he decides to hide in for, uh, from the sisters or the daughters um is is like right behind where the uh, the horseman appears in, in like his vision or his you know his through his men- mental instability, and he just instead of this time running away, he goes fuck this and goes straight for it. Yeah, um, that was, I you know what, I I think, I I for that that horseman that he said our ancestors are calling us. The the old Jack said to to current Jack like oh. Like our ancestors are calling us, and then Jack looks outside, and uh, he's he sees the horseman. So I'm 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 maybe thinking like going back to the speculation of the horseman. Like maybe it's his ancestors. Maybe it's what he was meant to be, or something like that. Who knows? Who knows right now? But it's a it's a it's a good surmisation, a good a good guess, a theory. So anything else uh, that you that you think that uh, would uh, highlight this episode, Chives? Um, well, I mean, we've already hit some key big points about this episode, but I would say another one is the fact how Jack, throughout the episode, is telling himself, oh, these robots can't defeat me, Aku, um, obviously isn't learning from this, and the fact that, uh, uh, you know, he has the daughters going after him, and this leads to, you know, the biggest scene of the whole episode, the the scene that's been leaked um and you know yeah. i told about you know jack takes a life um the scene where he kills one of the daughters this you know this is when jack realizes oh this this just, just got real yeah 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 he realizes i just took someone's life they're they're not robots like i thought they were and that's when you kind of see him stumble and break apart for a second and like not judging or not um trust his judgment in that moment yeah, and then he falls into the river, and that is the end of the episode. Yep. So I like, I guess with that that being the end of the episode, we I want to just highlight highlight just a, a little a, like a couple little things through the episode, and then we can wrap this up. Basically, I I really enjoyed the setting. I like how much the setting changed through the fight. So first we start off in the forest right after he fights off the drone, and he's fighting them through the forest, and then he runs back to the drone to hide in its body parts, which is. Like, they've never, like, usually in Jack, they never go back to something once Jack beats it. Or, like, on, on rare occasion they have, but, like, usually more often than not, he beats it. Like, you know, he beats one of the robots, it's gone. You're never really going to see it again. But yeah. it, but we're getting a lot, what I like in this is we're getting a lot of consistency. Like, how he's carrying the blade of the of the scat man from the first episode. And he it's actually, like, carried over. He's still wielding it and still using it in, in this episode, or at least trying to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty consistent with the 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 story writers and the animators for this episode. Um, the fact that he actually gets to use the blade um, this time around was yeah. uh, pretty great. And um, yeah, ended this literally ended the episode with a bang. Yeah. So my my final little bit is like it's just going to be the setting because I think you guys covered mostly all the character stuff and that was pretty much all uh, like all the important stuff. I just really like mentioning the setting because they did a really good job with this. Like the rain, when the daughters of Aku are running through the rain, and you see like the bolt of lightning crack, and you see like one, then the two, then the six. You know, like it's it, like they all start showing up through like the yeah. cracks and rain, which is really well drawn and really well animated. And then uh, I really, really enjoyed uh, the the burial tomb 
that he's yes. in. That yes. scene is really, really intense. Like, Jack is hiding for his life. Like, Jack, like on rare occasion does Jack hide, and in this it's so much more intense. Like, they, they can almost sense his presence. Levels of, like, scariness. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, that was yeah. pretty great. Yeah, exactly. Like uh like the the when he's hiding in the in the tomb itself and he has his only light source is the bug. That yeah. little firefly. Yeah, and look. He, you can see every time it dims, you can see the fear in his eyes and his heart dropping because he knows the second that dims out, it's it's, it's game uh, over. Yeah. Uh so I think just wrapping it up guys, it was a really good episode. Uh I'm, I'm gonna get his name wrong, and I really hate to do this, but Gendy or Gendy, the guy, the artist that had basically dr- uh, drawn and been the director on all this, is doing a really good job with this reboot of the set and the fifth season. It's incredible. Uh, any last comments, guys? Uh, the music, mm-hmm. music for the uh, tomb scene. It was really good too. It was that intense. was yeah. It was it added to the effect of. Uh jack's sense of urgency to hide and his his fear like it just it went really well with uh that particular scene yeah yeah but uh yeah i mean that yeah that scene was beautiful in every way aesthetically musically uh action wise great but i mean i think we've hit all the key points that we've been meaning to hit on this right yeah now. yeah so uh this has been the cube this is Chris, and this is Chives, and we we this was the Samurai Jack episode two season five review. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. See ya. Bye guys. <laughs>